And the Gators and the Crimson Tide have won 40% of the tournament titles. Tonight, the old rivals are back together to meet again. They have been the cream of the crop in the SEC. These are two of the great programs that have created one of the great rivalries in all of college softball. Winners of the last 12 regular season championships, Florida Gators tack on the postseason tournament title. A combined nine SEC tournament titles. And Alabama are your 2012 SEC tournament champions. And three national titles. And the Gators win! A postseason hero! Shot for Skyler Wallace, and the top seed is into the semis. Alabama's ready to roll as the top seed in the tournament. Florida will fight for an SEC championship, seeking a fifth trophy. It's time to play for the championship. Welcome to the SEC on ESPN. It's Florida, it's Alabama, it's a championship Saturday night. And an historic one, an Alabama win is a record-setting sixth title. A Florida win matches Bama and LSU with a fifth SEC tournament championship. Look at the powerhouse numbers for the Gators and the Crimson Tide with a combined 23 conference championships and the three natties, two for Florida and one for Alabama. And we welcome you to Davis Diamond here at Texas A&M for our SEC championship game. I'm Beth Mowens, along with former Aggie Amanda Scarborough and the two-time Olympic gold medalist, Michelle Smith. Well, when we talk about the Florida Gators, guys, they are coming in as the defending champs, winners of this tournament a year ago. We know about Amanda Lorenz, four-time All-SEC, but so far in this tournament, Michelle, it's been Lorenz and friends. Well, and Amanda Lorenz, you know, when you look at Gator softball and you think about this team, she's the most consistent player hitter in the SEC. Her abilities go far beyond her bat. It's her leadership, her ability to play defense. She is the career leader in batting average and on-base percentage for the Gators. Why? Because she has a great eye. Over 50 walks on the season. She knows her strike zone. She can hit for power. She can do it all. Just an amazing leader for this Gator team. But this week, she's had some run support. She's had some help, which has been so important. Important. The Jordans in the top of the lineup, Matthews and Roberts getting it done, but it was Hannah Adams with a big solo shot, all three RBIs in the semifinals to help get the Gators into this championship game. So Florida routine returns as they six seed against the one seed Alabama. It's really been a magical season for the regular season uh, winners in the Southeastern Conference and the Tide, Amanda, swept all the awards and they come in very strong again. Very strong and that's exactly how they started, Beth. They started the season 33-0. and 0. Didn't think that they were ever going to lose. And then when they got to the SEC, they got stronger. They continued their dominance. In fact, Patrick Murphy got coach of the year. And then Sarah Cornell, who's a transfer pitcher from Hofstra, she got pitcher of the year in the SEC. And then another new face in the circle with Montana Fouts, who got freshman of the year. A really strong year for Alabama in SEC play. And an interesting move. Fouts and Cornell have already won games here at the tournament. They are not getting the start. It is Crystal Goodman, last year's Junior College National Player of the Year, 10-0 on the season. She only made four starts in the SEC all year long, and now the biggest start of her career here tonight. Another new face in the circle for Alabama is Crystal Goodman. She likes to use her changeup. She'll drop it down to 58 miles an hour, and I think that her drop ball has the best movement out of any of her pitches. She likes to stay down in the zone. Back on April 20th, she pitched in game three of their regular season series and got a win over Kelly Barnhill. Montana Fouts came on to get a save. And for Goodman, she also threw last night an inning in relief to pick up a save in their win over Kentucky. And it's Amanda Lorenz, just the eighth player 
in over two decades of SEC softball that has been all conference first teamer all four years. And a 416 batting average, her career numbers as good as anybody that's ever played in the SEC. She's one of those athletes that you know every other coach in this conference <laughs> cannot wait to see her graduate. They're like, I, I don't ever want to have to pitch to her again. It feels like she's been here forever. Yes. Well, because she's done that much damage in the SEC. <laughs> Here's the 1-1 one -one to Lorenz. And I think what sticks out is just her eye at the plate. She puts so much pressure on a pitcher in the circle to be able to bring a ball on the plate. And when you ask her how she trains her vision, trains her eye, it's like she kind of looks at you crazy. It's just like, I, I don't know, I just do it. I can just see a pitch and recognize it. it. just comes naturally for her. A lot of work put in when nobody's watching. And it, it's really the, the other part of the Lorenz story, that infectious personality. She's such a great leader and teammate for this Gator squad. They tease her and call her Mandy Softball because that's all she loves to do is play the game. And watch it. <laughs> Constantly watching. A 3-1 pitch here, and Lorenz draws the leadoff walk. For much of the season, it was Lorenz and Kendall Lindemann, and the rest of the offense struggled, and Kendall is right there behind her in the two spot. And we talked about some of the other heroes for them offensively. Jade Carraway will get the start tonight in the outfield. Jordan Matthews not in the starting lineup. And now for Kendall Lindemann. 0 for 6 so far in the tournament. And right at Hemphill, who snares that one down. So now 0 for 7 for Lindemann. But I think still a good sign for Florida to see her more, more so barrel up a ball instead of popping it up. She's walked a lot, and her timing has been a little bit off. You can tell she's not even perfectly timed up on that one, but a good play by Bailey Hemphill. That'll bring up Hannah Adams, who hit a two-run home run in the first inning of the semis. And drove in all three runs yesterday. They have back-to-back -back shutout wins. And Kelly Barnhill, who's won both of those, is back in the circle tonight. So this offense knows they only need perhaps a couple to get it done. Bama trying to turn two, and Adams able to beat the throw, two down. Jordan Roberts, the catcher. Has a couple of runs batted in so far in the tournament. Florida has played three games, Alabama two. Two sixty-seven on the season for Florida. They had won the last four regular season championships and by their standards a down year dot 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 so far uh, we're starting to sense in the last couple of days for Tim Walton's club that old Gator feeling of revving it up just in time for the postseason well anytime you have Kelly Barnhill in the circle you have an opportunity to win a game they've got one of the best defenses in the country as per the norm but it's been the offense this year they really just have struggled to put runs up on the board Number one win percentage in the country amongst active coaches. And his Gators have beaten three ranked teams in the last three days. As they continue to build their resume, both these teams, real good shot at a top eight seed when we announce the field of 64 tomorrow night. And that would mean they could both stay home for the regionals and the supers and a big advantage for home teams in the postseason. Here's the 2-2 to Roberts. Well, you think about even what that last at bat did for them in the Super Regional last year against Texas A&M for Florida. They had mm -hmm. the last at bat. They got to walk it off. It took three games, and they were headed back to Oklahoma City because of it. It pays to be a, a, a Super Regional host and a regional host. Full count from Goodman. Fouled into the screen. Here's what's uh, at stake for Florida. They've been a host in 10 of the last 11 years. In fact, the last time they had a roadie 
super. <laughs> they were here in Aggieland, mm -hmm. and uh, Amanda Scarborough's chased them right out of the tournament. The fighting Scarboroughs did. <laughs> Ball four to Roberts, a couple of walks, and perhaps a case of the nerves for the youngster Goodman. Big spotlight on her tonight. There's Montana Fouts. She comboed with Goodman in the regular season win when Alabama swept all three games in Gainesville. And they beat Kelly Barnhill twice. Fouts as a freshman, I think this is a, a big tournament for her. Her start earlier, opportunity possibly to throw here this evening. It's freshman year, everything is new. Championship games, you don't get to throw in a lot of them. So when they do come about, you have to learn to control those nerves. We may see both the present and the future of big time SEC pitchers tonight if Fouts happens to get in. Of course, Kelly Barnhill will be going for her 100th career win tonight. As Reynoso fouls one off. But I think with, with Alabama starting a different pitcher in all three games of the SEC tournament, you, you see their pitching depth. I mean, you have three really strong arms that weren't here on your team last year with Sarah Cornell, who you're looking at there, remember SEC Pitcher of the Year. She was a transfer. Montana, a freshman, and Crystal Goodman, who came from the junior college level. And also pops it up in foul territory and drifting out of play. Sarah Cornell got the win last night, so the pitcher of the year in the SEC, 21 and 1. Did that guy catch it in his food tray? <laughs> I hope not for his sake. Catching it in his nachos. Oh, oh. he tried to he tried to one-hand it. Yeah. Save the nachos. Not a bad choice. Here's the one-two to Reynoso. Foul tip. She's three for ten in this tournament. Three runs scored. Tim Walton really talks about Reynoso as the player that embodies this Florida spirit and probably the best defensive shortstop they've had in Gainesville. She's another one that added a little bit of depth to their lineup. We talked about Roberts and Adams and Matthews, but Reynoso also had a big hit in that comeback against South Carolina. And well, that's what this offense needed. They needed others to pick up, to get something done for their own confidence. And you can see how much she's choking up on the bat, which is an, is an adjustment that she's making and has been making with two strikes. Shorten up, and it helps her foul off a lot of pitches. She's had a, a lot of really long at-bats because of it. Yet another full count, and Goodman is working hard here in the first, already up to 23 pitches. Screwball in the inside corner and just, just in the river. It's a good eye by Reynoso. But she's yet to find that inside corner. You know, Coach Murphy kind of licking the umpire, like, where is that? Protected inside there. 69 miles per hour, the velocity from Crystal Goodman. Goodman does have a tendency to walk a lot of batters. She's got 30 walks in her 70 plus innings. So she's used to pitching with a lot of traffic. Couple of walks. Adams and Roberts on the base paths. And it hit the base runner. Hannah Adams out, ran right into that, and took away what could have been a run scoring opportunity for the Florida Gators. Ball hit hard, but Hannah Adams running in front of it. Big break for Bama. SEC championship on the line tonight for the Florida Gators. Kelly Barnhill helped them get one last year, trying to go back to back. She's already 2-0 in this tournament and has not given up a run. And she wanted the ball again, and the Gators are giving it to her.
and a shot at Alabama, a team that beat her twice during the regular season. Taking the hill to try and win the SEC title. The senior out of Marietta, Georgia, sitting on 99 career wins and 29 for the season. Three straight years of 30 wins and 300 strikeouts. And the pop-up here, Reynoso going back for it, one down. Kelly Barnhill, ability to move the ball through the zone. She's been throwing a two-seam fastball with a little bit of drop on it this year. Rise ball, she'll throw it up at your eyes. Love the way that she'll take you up the ladder, but she can also throw that rise ball through the middle part of the zone. You have to respect that upward spin because she can control that pitch at three different planes. Over 1,100 strikeouts in her career. A strikeout leader for the Gators, and she's been outstanding in this tournament, has pitched two shutouts, 18 strikeouts in her two games. Oh, she's shaking off a couple of pitch calls there. And it's only the second time all year that she's thrown back-to-back -back complete game shutouts. Happened earlier on in March in Tennessee and UCF. Very familiar lineup that she'll be facing for Alabama. She's already retired Alyssa Brown. KB Sides had a big three-run double yesterday. Bailey Hemphill looking for her first hit of this tournament. So the two big boppers, they've walked a lot. Hemphill and Lindemann have not been able to hit one yet. Here's the 2-0. Three and, and he's kind of stingy on that side of the plate for both pitchers. He's out with Goodman and now Barnhill on the arm side of the plate and just trying to work that outside corner inside the right-handed hitters, and he's not giving it, establishing his zone early. Well, that's what it's all about, figuring out what the umpire is going to call and not call for you in that first inning. Sides taking all the way. And Amanda, back to the point about the two shutouts for Barnhill. It's been a while since she's done that consecutively in this season. I loved her pitch counts in those two games. 92 pitches in game two, 102 in game one. Those are excellent pitch counts for Barnhill. She has a tendency to throw a lot of pitches in the game. KB Sides draws the walk and a one-out base runner. And now it's Bailey Hempel. What a season for Bailey. Third in the country with 22 home runs. Fourth in the nation with 69 runs batted in. Coming in on her hands. One and all. And speaking of hands, she has really quick hands. Doesn't do a lot with her load. Can get to pitches really quickly. In fact, she had a tendency in the past couple of years to really have a lot of foul balls down the left field line. Runner goes. The throw is in time to get KB sides. And Roberts catches her. Two out. I love the way that Roberts is going to throw from her knees and get that ball all the way down. Adams early. Look at the way she's there and set up. Great tag. That is awesome execution by the Gators. 1-1 one, one to Bailey Hemphill on a fly ball out to center. Alex Voss has it. Side retired. Scoreless through one at the SEC Championship. Welcome back to the SEC Softball Tournament Championship game. For Alabama, they won the regular season this year, but it had been Florida that had won four straight regular season championships. They're used to winning in this league, but this year's been a little bit different. Their record's not quite as good, just 500 in the conference. They have to win this game to really keep their hopes alive of hosting a Super Regional. They've done that in 10 of the last 11 years. And why is it so important to host a, set, a Super Regional? Because 76% of the teams who have hosted a Super Regional since that format started in 2005 have gone on to the Women's College World Series. Home field advantage, especially with that new stadium in Gainesville, would be important for the Gators. 
And Holly, when you do a deep dive into the resumes of the other teams that uh, are are fighting for one of those top eight seeds, the, the Gators are right there. Uh, it's going to be a tough call for the selection committee this year on what we call those host bubbles. Seven, eight, nine. You know, you need a top eight to host both weekends. And then again, 14, 15, 16, 17. You start looking at how teams played at the end of the season, if there are any head-to-head -head matchups. And that brings us to our favorite game, I America. Love this game. Let's play blind <laughs> resume. Three teams right there. Who have you beat? Top 10 wins, top 25 wins, and then also, did you have a bad loss? And you can do some of the number crunching there. Who would you pick as the best resume if you were on the selection committee? Let's see it again. Let's see it again. To me, it looks like the one on the left is the obvious answer. Yeah. Well, look at all the top 25 wins oh, for Florida. Ooh, so there's a comparison to Minnesota. They uh, they lost to Michigan in the championship of the Big Ten today. And Arizona, how about taking two out of three from UCLA this weekend on the road? Well, that definitely helps their resume, mm -hmm. that's for sure. Florida played a really challenging schedule before yep. yes. SEC, and then you get into SEC and have another chance to be able to pile up some more wins. But to me, I mean, look how many, even the number of top ten wins that Florida has. Hoover, just outside the bag foul. Well, that's why when we compare this year's team to Gator teams of the past, we're like, oh, they don't hit as well. There's an, their power numbers are down. You know, their fielding is excellent. They've got Barnhill still in the circle. But offensively, well, look at their schedule. Maybe <laughs> that's yeah. why. And even though they've had the lowest batting average in the SEC, they've still managed to win games. Well, the fact that their worst loss is against Mississippi State, who has an RPI of 32, I mean, that says a lot as well. Yeah. We saw folks putting on their rain gear. We've got a little mist in the air here in College Station, Texas. Hoover reaches for it. Maddie Morgan at third. Got her. One down. And the leadoff is retired here in the top of the second. Six, seven, and eight in the order for Florida. With that little mist in the air, it's just perfect hair weather, you know? It just gets in your hair, gives it a little bit of moisture after you curl it, and it just goes uh, straight. <laughs> makes the mine a little frizzy. <laughs> You're Look the like opposite. Like a Q-tip. <laughs> Jade oh, Carraway man. is a new addition to the lineup today, the junior from Winter Garden, Florida. She'd been playing a lot late in the season. And uh, if nothing else, Carraway is... Rarely a routine out. She will foul, foul off eight, nine, ten balls till she finds one she likes to try and slap out to left. Corners are pulled way in defensively for the tide, and so are second and short, and the outfielders all playing in against these slap hitters. Caraway is one of those interesting slappers. That, as you said, she fouls off a ton of pitches, only four walks on the season. Yeah. She was she was their leadoff hitter for a while. And I you can't be an, uh, no. a leadoff if your OB is under 400. Exactly, yeah. and, and you only have four walks on the year. I asked Coach about that, and he said, you know, she likes to swing the bat, and she'll go after stuff. They found her a spot down the lineup. Morgan, the one hopper, two out. Maddie busy here in the second inning. We got a Sunday night baseball matchup for you. Tomorrow night, it's the Brewers and the Cubs. Milwaukee took game one, seven to nothing, and game two took 15 innings for the Cubs pulled it out two to one. Sunday night baseball coming your way from Wrigley Field, seven Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Hannah Sipos, the freshman in the eight spot, manning third base again tonight. You know, I saw while Alabama was hitting after that first inning, when Florida hit, Crystal Goodman went back down into the bullpen, threw a little bit more. There were a lot of pitches back in that first inning, and now Montana Fouts is going to head to the bullpen, stay loose. But because she was throwing so many balls, I love the fact that she went down there and just tried to feel better, fi find her release point a little bit better. Well, and as you reference, it's going to be one of those nights yeah. where it's going to be tough to stay warm. Yeah. And with a chill in the air. And, Michelle, you talk often about how pitchers need to practice pitching in this kind of weather. 
to get used to a slippery softball, to get used to throwing when you're not necessarily going to be at your best. Absolutely. You're going to play in it, so you have to practice in it. And the rainy days, a lot of times, they're like, oh, I want to go into the, I want to go into the indoor batting cage and do a little <laughs> don't throwing. Don't do it. No, don't, don't do, do it. it. Stay go out to that pen. Exactly. <laughs> One, two to Cypos. Lays off the high heat. And the other thing, too, is you have to get used to you know, using rosin. A lot of young pitchers don't like to use rosin because it almost feels slippery. Once you get used to it, though, it builds a little tack and definitely helps you in wet conditions. Changeup just missed. I was one of those that didn't like rosin. I, I like the dirt. Every single pitch the dirt, but not as good if it's going to be rainy and that dirt right. turns to mud. mud. Another full count. That's the fourth already for Crystal Goodman. Fly ball out to Brown. Side retired. Three up and three down for Crystal Goodman. Uh, we are headed to the bottom of the second scoreless. Been a shot at an SEC championship. The 2019 SEC Softball Tournament is brought to you by GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Crowd strike three! Alabama wears a crown of crimson! The Florida Gators win their first national championship! The Florida Gators win back-to-back -back national championships! Back-to-back oh, -back titles for Florida, and oh, so close to a third. That epic series for the championship against Oklahoma a couple years ago. These two have actually played head-to-head -head for a national championship. Florida beating Alabama for that one. This is their fourth time in the SEC final. And uh, two and one in favor of Florida, but Alabama does have the 2012 SEC Championship, which was a 10-1 win, and the only run rule shortened championship game in 23 years. Roller to Hannah Adams, one down. Four, five, six coming up here for Alabama. And your view from the spectacular Diamond Club behind home plate, and then out into the pricey seats. What a great venue this is. It's first year fully involved. They played here late last season and into the NCAA tournament. It is spectacular. 28 million bucks and they did everything right. Barnhill to face Maris Schroeder. You talk about a pitcher that's got to turn it on and off, guys. The end of the regular season against Mississippi State, Kelly Barnhill gave up nine earned runs and three home runs in two games and then came here and whoop, shut it right down. 15 straight scoreless innings now for Kelly. Holly? Well, Coach Tim Walton said earlier this week that they actually had a really difficult uh, conversation with Kelly Barnhill before this tournament, really sat her down and said, what is it that you need to be successful? What, what about your schedule can we do? How can we help you be at your best right now? I think Kelly Barnhill is a very smart young lady, maybe thinks a lot and analyzes a lot of different things. So they wanted to put her in the best position to succeed here at this SEC tournament by facilitating her schedule, making some of those decisions for her and switching things up so she could turn off her mind and just turn on that pitching. Well, in Holly, when it's championship time, you have to be at your best mentally, physically. And I love that coach was saying, hey, help me help you. And he was talking about how well Barnhill knows her body. She really understands her body, has a good feel, and it really helps him be able to communicate with her and, and trust what she's telling him, too, even though sometimes he might have to say, okay, this is how it's going to be. They have a really good relationship and dialogue back and forth. One, two to Schroeder. Outside the line. It's been a, a heck of a career for Kelly Barnhill, a quest for a national championship, still very much in her sights, but a couple of All-America honors, the National Player of the Year two years ago, and the career strikeout leader now in Florida history, going for her 100th win tonight. 
And, and despite the problems in the regular season, guys, you get the sense from Tim Walton, he kind of knows I probably have the best pitcher and the best hitter in the country in his mind. And can we get enough around them for three weeks in the tournament to steal a championship? Yeah, I mean, the regular season is basically over. This is a one-game season from here on out. And if you can, you can find those clutch hits, you know, it's timely hits with the defense and the pitching of Barnhill, you're going to go a, a long way. And she's had run support in this tournament, which is a, a big thing that she didn't necessarily have earlier this year. It's a completely different game when you pitch with a lead versus when there's goose eggs up on the board or you're behind. Two strike pitch to Schroeder. Got her. First strikeout, two down. And the other thing I think um, that we're seeing Amanda from Kelly Barnhill is that she's working the lower half of the zone a lot more, even with her lower rise ball, and then doing this, then climbing back upstairs. So she'll work a two seam, she'll come lower in the zone, and then she throws that pitch up in your eyes and she just gets people to whiff through it even though the pitch is out of the zone. I love that low rise that she has. It's so deceptive, it fools a lot of hitters' eyes, and it's a little bit slower. It's about 65, 66. And it travels well. So in other words, it travels through the zone. Mm -hmm. And that's really the key. The numbers on Barnhill, so solid. Going for her 30th win of the season with those 300 strikeouts. Skylar Wallace, who was the hero in the, the uh, quarterfinal win for Alabama. Tied one all with the uh, Georgia Bulldogs into the eighth inning. And Wallace, who was deeper down the lineup on that night, came through huge. I think she's someone who gets a little bit overshadowed because of the fact that Montana Fouts is also a freshman. But look what she did against Georgia. Eighth inning, solo shot, walks it off. And the celebration that this Alabama team had after this moment was so much fun to watch. You could tell that they were here in College Station looking to win it all. Two and two. So much turnover for Alabama. Uh, you know, there, there weren't a lot of expectations outside the program. They were picked to finish middle of the pack this year in the SEC. But inside the program, Patrick Murphy and this coaching staff said, uh-uh, we aren't lowering any expectations. You come here to play for championships, and that's what they're doing. Barnhill gets them one, two, three in the second. We are still scoreless in this SEC final. That's what they came to Davis Diamond for tonight. Florida and Alabama and an SEC championship. The one seed has won this championship 11 times in 22 years, but just once in the last five years. And the regular season champion tied even so far with Florida. And the SEC, the number one conference RPI again this year. In each of the last two seasons, they have sent all 13 teams, no softball at Vanderbilt, on to the NCAA tournament. Good chance they'll do it again. Texas A&M will be the one to watch tomorrow night with a 45 RPI. They've gone to 17 consecutive NCAA tournaments. They have six top 25 wins, so the resume is on par, and they will definitely be in the conversation to get in. RPI, strength of schedule, those are the ones that when we're always discussing and trying to figure out who's in, who's not. Those are the keys that I like to look at. And, and then, of course, the eye test. Yep. Alex Voss here, nine, and then the top of the order. I think we'd all be shocked, right, if Oklahoma's not the overall yeah. number yeah, one? Yeah, I, I think I they'll be number one. A new NCAA record for a winning yep. streak within a single season at 39 yep. in a row. Just two losses all year. And Alabama and Oklahoma are a lot alike in the fact that they have new faces mm -hmm. in the circle with Grace Lyons, Grace Green, two freshmen for them. And the transfer, G. Juarez, yes. uh, and throwing for them. She's the lone remaining unbeaten at 22-0. and 0. And Shannon S Sale, too. Mm -hmm. Another transfer. 
Voss, slow runner, Jenkins gonna have to hurry. Got her. One down. That'll bring up Amanda Lorenz, walked in the first. Good power, good average, driving people in. From a high school national player of the year to the SEC freshman of the year, and then on to the SEC player of the year. And well on her way to another All-America honor. Takes a look at strike one from Crystal Goodman. Who's gonna break through here? Neither side with a base knock yet. And it will be Amanda Lorenz. One on with one out. Shortened to the ball, getting a pitch that she likes. A little bit up in the zone, but swinging early in the count, making something happen. Second time through the order now for Florida. Let's see what kind of adjustments that they make. Kendallman Lindemann still looking for that first one. 0 for 7 in their three-plus games here. Two-time All-American herself. And the former Big Ten Player of the Year at Minnesota joining Florida this year. Majority of transfers in college softball, you can usually go and play right away. And they have been a big part of the story nationally this year. Let's break it down. Well, we always talk about timing and how important it is. And in the regular season, she got her front foot down quite a bit earlier than she has in this tournament. And because of that, she's just not getting an opportunity to see the balls long. You can see in the regular season, the front foot is down. She's on time here. She's late. She's not on time. And her stance seems to be a bit wider, too, when you look at what she was in the regular season compared to what she is now. And so when you see a hitter doing that as a pitcher, the last thing you really want to do are throw them change-ups, right? If they're not on time, you want to try and throw the ball hard and at them. Chopped to Jenkins, couldn't backhand it. It scoots out into left, and Lorenz motors around to third. Lindemann will follow behind to second. And a couple in scoring position. And this is where, uh, uh, this is all the little intangibles that you love about Amanda Lorenz. Look at the way she is gonna see this play in front of her. This ball is bashed right at Claire Jenkins. It's gonna go off of the glove. And look at the way immediately that you're gonna see Lorenz coming around. She sees that play right in front of her. And look at the way she is just looking out at that ball. And she's gonna see that it's into the left field and easily, no hesitation, easily gets in to third base. Adam, Hannah Adams, who cashed in on a couple of opportunities yesterday with a two-run home run and an RBI single to drive in all three runs for the Gators yesterday, has two out there for it. And Stephanie Van Brakel Prothro will come on out and talk to her young pitcher. Take a moment here to remind you that the fifth Formula One race of the season is the Spanish Grand Prix in Barcelona. Lewis Hamilton has won this race three times before. It's F1 racing Sunday morning at 9.05 Eastern on ESPN2 and your ESPN app. Holly? Well, you know, there was some thought that make, or Crystal Goodman was getting the start tonight because they wanted to kind of have a pitch count on Montana Fouts. She's been battling an injury, and they want to keep her work level at a lower pace. But I talked to Patrick Murphy of Alabama before the game and asked him if that was the case, and he said absolutely not. He thought that Crystal Goodman deserves to get a start. He wanted her to give her this experience in the circle. And although I have seen Montana Fouts go out and get loose in the bullpen, he definitely thought that Goodman deserved this opportunity on her own, nothing to do with the pitch count with Montana Fouts. Oh, and they're going to go ahead and put Hannah Adams on to load up the bases and then have a force out with one out. They have a five-player pitching staff 
And what has evolved at the uh, late in the season has been a three-player starting rotation. They'll use Fouts. They'll use Cornell. Goodman started the last month of the season, got into the rotation. So it was her turn tonight. And, you know, I like the decision, but on the other hand, I would have liked to have seen Fouts start simply because she's a freshman, and it's an opportunity for her to be in a big moment as a freshman and feel those nerves because, let's face it, you get into championship games of regionals, super regionals, a women's college world series. You need to, to know what that feels like. Back up against the wall, a must-win game. Force out at any bag now. The infield in for Alabama with one down. Actually, they're back again. At double play depth, Roberts not the best wheels at the plate. Well, and Goodman throws a lot of ground balls, too, because of her drop balls. So, so far, the majority of the outs have been on the ground. A great opportunity for Alabama to be able to turn a double play. And one thing to point out, too, both of these teams playing really good defense. Neither team has made an error in this tournament. Roberts does have a home run. We saw her hit one out against, or a grand slam, excuse me, against Auburn. A single, a double, and then the intentional walk to load them up. Out in front of the changeup. Oohs and ahs from the crowd. Two and two. Called strike three, two down. Big get for Goodman. The bases are loaded. You have one of the more powerful hitters up at the plate for Florida, and Goodman steps up. She got herself into a little hole because the count turned to 2-0, but then it was three strikes in a row. My favorite one, this one, the changeup, the 2-1 change, and then she gets Jordan looking at a pitch that is right down the middle, freezes her. Had a huge strikeout last night when she came on in relief to end a threat, and a big one right there for the second out, and now it's Sofia Reynoso. Induces the fly ball, Brown in center, side retired. They walk Adams to load him up, and the strategy works for the Tide. No damage done. Crystal Goodman able to work out of the jam, and Florida leaves them loaded in the top of the third, and now the Tide will bring the seven, eight, nine hitters up to the plate. Still looking for a first hit off of Kelly Barnhill. They've had one base runner so far tonight. Watching the Alabama dugout, you guys, you just see how loose they are, how much fun that they have with each other. They're looking at each other, doing, I don't know, random dances to songs that are played in every single stadium that they, they now have a coordinated dance for, but they're all loose. They love playing with each other. Well, it showed right from day one when they started out the season 33-0. That's an SEC record. And the third best start in Division I history to a year and everybody said, well, you know what? They're not playing a great schedule. Wait till the end of the year. It's all backloaded. We'll find out who the real Crimson Tide are as Barnhill gets Maddie Morgan to pop up. And lo and behold, they showed us who they were. And they went on to win the regular season championship. Well, it's game seven between the Blazers and Nuggets. And it's tomorrow afternoon on ABC. Game seven of the Western Conference Finals. See if the Nuggets... Uh, the Western Conference semis, excuse me. See if the Nuggets and the Blazers can move on. Sunday at 3.30 Eastern on ABC. When Alabama went into Florida, into Gainesville, that, that to me was a telling series. They mm -hmm. looked like they belong. 
They beat up on Florida, went into LSU, and Kayla Bro said she never won a game in Baton Rouge <laughs> when she played. So she, she called Baton Rouge the place where tied dreams go to die. <laughs> and what did they do? They go into LSU and they sweep to win the regular season. They have, they have the most wins in the country, 52, the most top 10 RPI wins in the country with nine. Here's the 2-0 to Reagan Dykes. Poor Kayla told us that fact, and I don't think that anybody's got to let her down. I think no. Michelle's mentioned it, Bess <laughs> mentioned it, Adam I mentioned it. I didn't say it. it on national TV. Smitty, I mean, <laughs> I not did. only drove the bus <laughs> over, but then backed it up. <laughs> you know, I like to hear the thud. <laughs> she was a part of their last SEC tournament winners in 2012, and then that was the springboard for them to go on to win the SEC's first national championship. She wasn't listening to me anyway, so see, <laughs> it'll be just fine. <laughs> Holly? Well, guys, we keep talking about where people will be selected, what the top seeds will be, so I just wanted to send a friendly little shout-out to our NCAA selection committee that are sequestered in Indianapolis. I was able to go there last year and see their setup. They have this big conference room with TVs everywhere, lots of snacks. So hi, everybody. <laughs> Hope you're having fun and that we're not bossing you around too much with these selection seeds and who should be where. <laughs> uh, that was said on behalf of Beth Mullins. <laughs> <laughs> She's the builder of the resumes, the blind resumes, by the way. Uh, oh, so. we got another one coming. Oh, she should yes. be on the committee. Yes. <laughs> not yet. Not yet. Yes. Love those. Full count to Reagan Dykes. The eighth spot in the order here for Bama. On a play. You want to see what tickets have already been punched? The selection committee doesn't have to pick them. They just got to put them in the bracket somewhere. And those shaded teams are the five former NCAA champions that are already in, including defending champion Florida State. They won the ACC with a run rule win today. Michigan taking the Big Ten. The UCLA co-champs with Washington, but since they won the head-to-head -head series, they get the automatic bid, and then Cal State Fullerton, a champ back in the 80s. Michigan's been looking really good, you guys. Megan Bobian, the lefty, was a freshman last year and one of the top freshman finalists. She's, she's been looking really good at the end of the year, but turning it on. Well, it's a team that's streaking and, and peaking at the right time. Earlier in the year, they had some mm -hmm. troubles, and we were all going, what's, what's going on up yeah. in Michigan? And, and now they come back. They're the regular season champs. They're the tournament champs. That might be one of the toughest calls for the selection committee. Yeah, I agree. Are two Big Ten teams going to host? Are three Big Ten teams going to be seated? Wild pitch, and that will allow the runner to get over to second base. And the first in scoring position for the Tide. The thing about these seats in the Diamond Club is that you feel like you're right back on, you feel like you're at the plate. So all those fans back behind the plate, like, dodged the ball that was coming on that slightly got away, but it, it, you have such a great seat to feel it's like you're on the field. And again, a bit of a spitting rain on and off tonight. That one got away from Kelly. Look out. <laughs> <laughs> they all turn. <laughs> Flinch. So you got Claire Jenkins, and then the top of the order coming around again for Alabama. They'll get a second look at Barnhill who has now thrown 16 scoreless innings here at the tournament and the fly ball to Caraway, two down. It's only the second ball that's been hit out of the infield for Alabama. Nice and easy pop-ups that have been to the infielders and then a couple of ground balls, one to Kelly and then one to second baseman Hannah Adams, that's it. Oh, the walk in the first inning got cut down, so she's on track. Other than the walk in this inning, she's been pretty efficient with her pitch count. And I think that's the big thing that we've seen this week. So with two outs, the leadoff is Alyssa Brown. They are really hoping that she can work her way out of a bit of a funk. She's 0 for 8 now in the tournament. Takes a look at strike one. One of the issues for Alyssa, you, you got to keep the feet inside the batter's box when you're slapping. And she's been called out a couple of times for that. And then that gets in your head because every time you're going for outside pitches, you're worried about where are my feet, am I in the box? And so you start focusing on the wrong things instead of focusing on the ball. Mm -hmm. She's been so good all year long for them. 
And really throughout her career, Alyssa's batting average has gone up every season. And they need her on base because of the speed element of their game. They're top 10 in the country in not only home runs, but stolen bases. Yeah, when you see this team run, they run like the wind. They are aggressive. They take the extra 60 feet over 131 stolen bases on the year. Barnhill just missed away, and now they've got Dykes scrambling back to the bag at second. I don't know if Dykes didn't know what the count was or maybe thought this was strike three, but she was definitely left out and uh, hung out. Maybe trying to induce the throw behind to advance 60 feet. Almost looked like she was trying to catch Roberts napping in yeah. a lazy throw back to the pitcher. Chop to third, Sipos has it. A base runner, but no damage done. Barnhill continues to put up bagels for Florida. Patrick Murphy with Holly Rowe on the other side. Come back to the SEC softball tournament. This is Patrick Murphy of Alabama. And coach, you went with Crystal Goodman in the circle tonight. What was your thinking behind that? Well, we've had a staff all year long, and the staff has done a great job. We've had five pitchers. That's the most we've ever had. And, you know, she's fresh. She's ready to go. And um, I thought I'd give her a shot. She's done well against this Florida lineup. They got a couple of hits, but she got out of a bases loaded gem. What do you like about her? She's gritty, you know, she's resilient. Um, she's been in kind of this situation before because last year she pitched for uh, Chipola Junior College and she had to uh, beat a team to get to the national championship game and she did that. So she's kind of used to this big environment, but um, you know, this is a great crowd too. I'm really proud of the fans here. Yeah, a lot of A&M fans showed up to watch your team. What does that make you feel? Oh, that's awesome. You know, and it's a win-win for the game of softball. Thank you, Coach. Thanks, Holly. Thank you very much, Holly. Well, Crystal Goodman also had a, a big game on the road in Gainesville in a hostile environment to beat Kelly Barnhill back in their regular season series. Three innings of work and uh, one strikeout, keeping Florida scoreless. Gators had a chance last inning with the bases loaded and then a strikeout and a flyout got Goodman into the dugout unscathed. This is 6-7-8 coming around. Yeah, Jamie, SEC it. Tournament Championship game. On, Alabama and LSU five titles. Florida right behind with four. And these two clubs have won the last 12 regular season trophies. One or the other has been at the top since 2007. There's that lethal changeup. She'll change speeds on any count. And sometimes it moves away from a right-handed hitter. Sometimes it moves down like her drop ball. But the only thing that's different is it's about 54 miles an hour, sometimes in the 40s. Two and two. And a strikeout for Crystal. Second in the last three batters she's faced. Well, Goodman has the ability to have large velocity separation. And when you can do that and you can split the velocities and locate pitches, you're going to get strikeouts. That pitch, a little bit of rise on it. We haven't seen her go upstairs a whole lot, but love the fact that she's showing a little bit of a different look. She'll go down in the zone. She's got that really good changeup and then sneaking a little rise in. Well, and I like what Pat Murphy was talking about with this pitching staff and, and the three of them, and you guys can address this as former pitchers yourselves, The not only the competition within, but that feeling like, hey, I can't let these guys down. You're pushing each other every day in practice as Caraway slaps one through the left side. They've been cheerleading for one another all year long. Yeah, you can tell that they really get along, and it's that support path where you go into a game and you know that there's somebody who has your back because there's depth with the fouts that could come off the bench or Cornell. And it probably helps that they're all newbies. It's all a new experience for them. And they're a doing freshman and a couple of transfers. Yeah. yeah. 
And they've got an awfully good pitching coach, too. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> a former All-American for the Tide. When we talk about good pitchers, good pitching coaches, and also those pitching coaches are calling the pitches. Mm -hmm. They've got lots and mounds and mounds, lots of information. They know how to pick hitters apart and attack their weaknesses. And a Sipos in the eighth spot in the order. And think about it, they all have different strengths too. Goodwin's going to mix speeds all the time. Fouts doesn't mix speeds as much. She's more hard and down. And then Cornell more up with their rise. So they all have different strengths that they rely on. Runner will stay. And I think, too, because they have such good energy in the circle, it bleeds out to the rest of the team. So you see it with the way that they play defense, and you see it with just how aggressive and intense they are at the plate, too. I mean, look at the amount of wins that they have this year, and none of those, those wins were by pitchers who were on the roster last year. Snared by Morgan at third. Two down. Quick reflexes. Saved extra bases there, and possibly kept a run off the board. She's ready for it. Look at Maddie Morgan. Quarter up the line, and that ball got on her in a hurry. And she's ready. As a third baseman, you live for moments like that. And Love it. It, it almost took her back it off almost, of her feet because yeah. it was hit so hard, so she got her glove there in time, but there's the velocity of that ball coming into her glove almost pushed her backward. <laughs> Her first year as a starter at third, and yeah, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> that she, with, she's sisters like, sisters don't five. shake hands. Sisters got a hug. <laughs> Get in there. Get in there. Well, we saw we saw Montana Fouts warming up out there in the bullpen, and what happened in the regular season when they played Florida. Goodman did throw the the uh, uh, early, and then Fouts came in. So this may be. The last possibly we will see against Goodman, and she has fared well so far against the Gators, has not given up a run in over seven innings. Trying to take care of the nine hitter because you'd rather not see Lorenz and Lindemann with runners on. I'm sure that's the message from Coach Murphy going yeah. out right here. This is it. This is the out. Fifth time for Murph, named Coach of the Year in the SEC. Now a fashion icon in Tuscaloosa with those RTR hats. They're tough to find in the stores. Roll Tide Roll. I've been wearing that all year long. And hey, when you're when you're 52 and 6, you're probably not going to change it. Or wash it. <laughs> <laughs> One two pitch here. Let's see if Caraway gets a rocking start. We got a Sunday night baseball matchup coming for you. Tomorrow night, it's the Brewers and the Cubs. Sunday night baseball from Wrigley Field begins at 7 Eastern on ESPN and your ESPN app. We've also got the NCAA Softball Selection Show tomorrow night, 9 Eastern, on ESPN2. And we unveil the field of 64. The hit and run was on. I don't know about you guys, but I almost can't sleep the night before the selection oh, show because yeah. it's like Christmas. That and usually it's lack of sleep for us, but um, usually yeah. I can't can't get to sleep. <laughs> it is one of our favorite days. We we all hunker down in the bunker together and we hop on the computers and make our phone calls and collect all our data and research. And <laughs> I think it's going to go Oklahoma, UCLA, Alabama, Washington. Those are my top four. And I've got Florida in my top eight right now. Yeah, I do too. Voss to second. And Wallace couldn't handle it. Two on for Amanda Lorenz.
And Caraway may have rolled an ankle sliding into second base. That's the first error for either team in this tournament. And Caraway just at the tail end of that. Right there. Oh. Oh. Well, they can keep her in here, or they could go to a pinch runner, and Jade could still re-enter the game. You can get lifted once for a runner. And uh, it doesn't look like Patrick Murphy is going to wait till the break in the inning to make a pitching change. He'll do it right here. And Montana Fouts, the SEC Freshman of the Year, coming on to face Amanda Lorenz. New pitcher for Alabama, the righty freshman from Grayson, Kentucky, Montana Fouts. Has a win against Georgia so far in the tournament. Also has a win against Florida from the regular season. And she is coming on in relief, trying to put down a threat by the Gators. Scoreless here with two outs in the top of the fourth inning in this SEC championship game. Jade Carraway is going to stay in there at second base. So here we go with the freshman of the year and the four-time SEC first-teamer at the plate in Amanda Lorenz. A walk and a single for Lorenz. They have seen fouts for 10 innings. Montana allowed just three hits, one run, and struck out seven in her two appearances against them in Gainesville. On for Crystal Goodman, who lasted for three and two-thirds. Caraway at second, Voss at first. A single and an error. The first on this Crimson Tide defense here. Gators choosing to keep Caraway out there instead of going to a pinch runner. Obviously, she is the go ahead run right now at second. After turning her ankle getting into second base just a moment ago. Fouts working mostly all the way to Amanda Lorenz. Great pitch recognition for Amanda. Checked foul, three and two. You jinxed her. Mm, I did. You hardly ever see her mm -mm. like that like a check swing, and I'm sure as a hitter, you're just hoping that that ball goes foul and doesn't stay fair. Full count. Runners moving, Lorenz grounds it to Hempill, who beats her to the bag. Fouts comes in and gets the big out, and her biggest fan is Crystal Goodman. Still scoreless to the bottom of the fourth, and we'll chat with Tim Walton next. Welcome back to the SEC Softball Tournament Championship on ESPN. Here with the Gators head coach, Tim Walton. And coach, you had a good instinct, as you often do, to put Jade Carraway in the lineup. She rewards you with that base hit, but then you just can't hit somebody in with Lorenz up to bat. What's preventing these timely hits? No, I think a little bit has to do with uh, us and a little bit has to do with them. I think pitchers make good pitches and, you know, in some cases we're, we're trying to do too much. In other cases, we're maybe thinking a little bit too much and changing 
from what got us to that point in the, in the first place. So it's a little bit of mental and it's a little bit physical, but it's, it's hard to hit with runners in the scoring position. That's the key to success in postseason. In the regular season, Alabama outscored you 12-2 to in the three-game series. So how important is it that you've got a 0-0 score heading into these late innings? Yeah, I think for us, we got to play a low-scoring low ball game against them. They have a good offense, and you know we off offensively struggle at times. So we got to keep this thing close. Kelly's done a good job so far. Um, we've had chances. We gotta, we gotta, we're going to keep turning that lineup over and hopefully you know, be able to get after Montana this next couple times through. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. About 17 scoreless innings so far for Kelly Barnhill at this SEC tournament. A couple of shutout wins. And she has held the Crimson Tide hitless so far as we move to the bottom of the fourth. Pitching for the third day in a row. And she will face two, three, four in the lineup. Um, waiting for Jade Carraway to take her place. May have gotten a little extra attention on the ankle that she turned, but she's going to head back out there left field. It's pretty impressive. She yeah. did get some attention, or if she got it wrapped, the timing yeah. of all that. Coach's interview was done, and then she came sprinting out of the dugout. Somebody had her staff helping her out. KB Sides walked in the first. Two walks, the only base runners so far for Alabama. Alabama now second time through the lineup, seeing Barnhill. Trying to put their first hit up on the board against her. We were talking about it earlier, Michelle, but I just think that she's had such a good mix. She's had that really high rise ball. She's had that lower rise ball and then still been able to work both sides with her two seam. And the change of speeds, too, where she'll hit 71 and mix in a 66. When she's doing that and having a good mix, she's one of the toughest pitchers to go up against in the country. And for better or worse, she's been in a lot of these situations, nil-nil and low-scoring affairs. You know, it's been so different for her this year through three seasons. She lost just eight times. But this year, 11 losses, a lot of those nail biters. And just the resiliency to keep fighting through, keep believing in your teammates that they're eventually going to get it done. We'll see how that serves them in the postseason. So far, so good. Well, those really are the, the two tails of these teams. Uh, Alabama has put runs up on the board for their young pitching staff, and Florida has struggled. Rope foul. But when you have a, a senior, very veteran national team experience as well, pitcher like Barnhill, you know, she's been able to keep them in games. Even Tim Walton said, even, you know, even though we don't have a great offense, still nobody wants to play us. I mean, even though we've lost 15 games on this season, nobody wants to see us paired up with them in supers or paired up with you at a regional. And it's true. It's mainly because of Kelly Barnhill. You don't have to face her. 3-2 to sides. And she has walked for the second time. First time for the leadoff. They let KB run the last time, and she got busted. Caught stealing at second. And Bailey Hemphill will come up here and will note the shift defensively with three infielders on the left side. Second baseman Hannah Adams moving over to join Reynoso and Sipos. Well, remember when she was up the first time, I was talking about all those foul balls that she hits down the left field line. She's more of a pull hitter. And you think of somebody, we even saw her home run spray chart, and they're more left field to center field versus someone like Alyssa DiCarlo for Georgia, who's more center field to right field. Another 20-plus home run hitter. How about the first time up for her? That third pitch was a miss, and she hit a fly ball to center field, worked her on the up and in corner, but that was a pitch that I think she'd like to have back. And, and as a hitter, when you look up and you see a shift on like that, you know where you're going to be pitched. Exactly. <laughs> so <laughs> it's, you move off the plate, 
you know, you, you take your zone with you and hope that something now on the inside corner, you can get around a little bit more, drive it you know, slightly oppo, but Hemphill, the majority of her home runs, if you look at her spray chart, it is definitely center toward left. Well, the fifth Formula One race of the season is coming up. It's the Spanish Grand Prix in Barcelona. F1 racing tomorrow morning for you at 9.05 Eastern on ESPN2 and your ESPN app. A lot of respect, too, for the outfielders for Bailey Hemphill's power. They are deep. Hanging around the warning track. 22 home runs on the year for Bailey. And her next RBI will be her 70th. Only Marissa Runyon, Kayla Hunt, and Charlotte Morgan have hit that mark in Alabama history. Everything coming inside or inside corner, three and one. How about that? Third in the country in home runs, fourth in runs batted in. And I just love the old school. No gloves, yeah. no nothing on your arms, nothing to protect you if it comes in too tight. Just get up there and swing it. That crouch to her stance. It's just so smooth and relaxed. That's what I love. It has a little bit of movement in those hands so that she can be quick to react. Even though hit off of her, she's right there to help Jordan Roberts out. No big deal. I think she's got lowered, too, within the at bat. Another 3-2 pitch coming. And a rope out to left. Base hit the first of the day off of Barnhill. Two on with nobody out. And after an 0 for 5 start, Bailey's got a hit well, here in the tournament. All those pitches on the inside corner, and that one actually leaks toward the outside. Look at the way that Jordan Roberts is set up inside. You can see her kind of reach for it. That pitch comes back through the zone, and Hemphill not afraid to go get those pitches on the outside corner and still pull them. She's so quick getting around the ball. Still beat the shift. Yep. Haley Tao is 2 for 6 in the tournament. Grounded out to second in her first at bat. Way back in the box. 67 miles an hour from Barnhill, 1 and 0. That's a terrific guy. Second in the country in walks. And still hitting 336. Patrick Murphy spotted her while she was still in middle school. Big football fan, the recruiting visit included a trip to see Nick Saban. Kaylee said, yep, I'm coming. <laughs> see you there. Sign me up. Two and two. She has that really great combination, though, of high slugging percentage and high on base percentage because of how good of an eye that she has. Her OPS is about 1,300. Really good one. Tao again to Adams at second. Over to Reynoso to get Hemphill, but sides now 60 feet away from an Alabama lead. Boy, and Reynoso had to go a long way in order to make that out at second base. Take a look at this. This is actually pretty incredible. Look at how far she's going to have to go in order to make that play over at second base. So this is going to be a ground ball over to Hannah Adams, and she's going to toss it over. But great read by Reynoso, knowing a second that that ball has hit right side, she's got to get to the bag. With one out, it's Marish Schroeder and runners on the corners.
Strike on the outside corner. Breaking 72 miles an hour there. Schroeder struck out on a rise ball in the second. Just the one K so far tonight for Kelly. 18 strikeouts through her first two games here. When Schroeder had opportunities in that game against Georgia when Alabama had the walk-off, the Skyler Wallace walk-off home run, Schroeder left seven runners mm. on base in that game, and she's right in the middle of their order. A lot of chances. The team left 13 on, so hit, clutch hits have been an issue so far this weekend. They were saved by the Skyler Wallace walk-off home run in the eighth inning to beat Georgia a couple nights ago. So far in the tournament, just three for 24. So Schroeder with a chance to change things up a bit. Not the numbers the Tide would like to see continue. A lot of lobs. That's KB Sides at third. It's a good eye and knowing your strike zone right there. The umpire has not called that pitch all game. Grounded to Reynoso, the throw to the plate, not in time. Sides sliding in safe and Alabama's got the lead. Well, this is about knowing speed and reading ball angle. The second that this ball is headed to the ground, even before it hits the ground, KB Sides knows that she needs to come home. This is great situational hitting, even though it's not a base hit. It's the ability to be able to see that you're going to score on this play. So a nice read by Sides, making sure she gets home. I'm actually surprised by Reynoso there. She's usually so good at making decisions. Mm -hmm. Would have liked to have seen her either throw to second base or throw to first base, but she had a couple of other options. That one not being the best. She just doesn't normally make those decisions where you, you know your runner at KB side, she's going to be able to score on a ball like that with the timing and how it played out. And granted, you know, double plays aren't easy to come by, but I, I thought she might turn two there exactly. to end the inning, but... It's 1-0 Alabama, and the first run allowed in the tournament by Kelly Barnhill. Her scoreless streak ends in 17 innings. Wallace lashes that one the opposite way and foul. And I think it should be pointed out, when you're going up against a strikeout pitcher and you only have one strikeout in the game, you're doing yourself a favor. You're making a defender make a play, make a decision. You're putting the ball in play and putting pressure on a defense. And for somebody who has close to 1,200 strikeouts in her career, only one tonight, it's a different feel. And Alabama's doing a good job of just making things happen. Exactly. And, and Tao, even though you know she hit into that fielder's choice and they got... Uh, the out at second base, his ability to move runners. Base hit. And Murphy will have to hold Kaylee Tao, who hesitated leaving the bag at second base. Uncertain whether Adams was going to get to it on the fly. So the base is now loaded for the Crimson Tide with one out. Well, look at this pitch location on an 0-2 count right over the middle of the plate. Wallace with two strikes is gonna be thinking in a hitter's mode of protecting the plate. Barrels up this ball, of course, it's over in the middle of the plate, but Kaylee Tao did indeed have to stop because I think that's a respect for Hannah Adams as a second baseman to see if she gonna catch that or stop it and keep it on the dirt, but she didn't, bases loaded. That'll bring up Maddie Morgan. Infield is in. Not the force out at any base here. Two hits off of Barnhill in the inning. And one run across. Let's check in with Holly. 
Well, Beth, as you said, it was misting out here. Actually, it was completely raining for a while, <laughs> and the softball got pretty wet. You can see Kelly Barnhill has brought out that rosin bag with her. Now she's really using it in between every pitch right now, just trying to get a little precision back, a little bit better feeling on the ball after it's gotten pretty wet out here. Well, remember, this all started with a leadoff walk. They always come back to haunt you. It doesn't matter if you're an All-American in the circle or somebody who's pitching your first game. That's what happens. One, two pitch. Two and two. Kudos to Alabama for the way they have battled against Barnhill. We mentioned just the one strikeout. They've had productive outs. They've moved their teammates. And a timely hit. Boy, is it starting to feel like Alabama, Florida? A little bit. Fourth time they've met in the final. The 77th overall meeting. Tide lead the series 40 to 36, only separated by one game before they met in the regular season. The two dominant forces in the league for a championship trophy. And a strikeout for Barnhill, two down. Pitch off the plate. Looks like it's going to be going up and away. And Morgan expanding that strike zone herself. Pitch count now in the last three days 270 for Kelly. Reagan Dykes. A couple of hits for Bama in their semifinal win over Kentucky. Drew Walker, first time up, back in the third. Little more success now, second time through the lineup. <laughs> Kelly's got it right here, 0-2. It's been a long week for Florida because they traveled in, had I think some flight delays, got in really late on Monday night, practiced on Tuesday. I get my days confused. Came in on Tuesday <laughs> night. <laughs> it's been a long week for all of us, but they started games on Wednesday. They played Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and now Saturday. Four games for them because they didn't have that bye that they're used to having in the SEC tournament. 0-2 oh, two with two outs. Back to Barnhill. Over to first, and they get out of it, limiting it to just one run in. As the tide leaves them loaded, but they strike first. A one-run lead through four. It's KB Sides who scores the first run. This is the emotion we're seeing out of Alabama this week. Welcome back to our SEC Championship here on ESPN2. One-nothing Alabama run across at the bottom of the fourth. And they grab the lead. Two, three, and four coming up in the fifth here for Florida to face Montana Fouts, who came on in the last inning and recorded an out. Got Amanda Lorenz to ground out to end the threat. Seven left on base for Florida, so they've had their chances tonight. Of course, Lindemann capable of tying it up with one swing. Lined out in the first, doubled in the third. Both of those were off the starting pitcher, Crystal Goodman. And that double, her first hit of the tournament. Florida here a year ago. They beat South Carolina to win the championship. So they are trying to 
go back to back for the fourth time in SEC history. Alabama looking for a record sixth title. Florida, LSU, and Auburn, the programs that have gone back to back in tournament history. Skied to shallow left, and there Jenkins has it one down. Montana Fouts, uh, named this week as one of the 10 finalists for National Freshman of the Year honors. A lot of people like her a bunch. Kelly Gooden at UCLA and Megan Faramo come to mind. Lexi Blair at Michigan. Danielle Williams at Northwestern. I know we talk a lot about Grace Green at Oklahoma. A lot of impactful freshmen this a year. A lot, yeah. Shea O'Leary, Natalie Den Hartog, one to watch at Minnesota. O'Leary, a Longhorn. And O'Leary leads the country in ERA. Mm -hmm. And then Den Hartog, I think, led the Big Ten in RBI. You're going to see all of them in the NCAA tournament. Be interesting to see where Virginia Tech ends up. They won the regular season in the ACC, got bounced from the tournament early. I think what hurts them is their strength of schedule is I think only a 138. But again, one of those programs that they come into your building yeah. for a regional and you're like, oh. All right. JM, JMU and yeah. Louisiana could cause some problems for you. Yeah. I was doing a little research on JMU already, and what a year that they've been having. They're actually the number one scoring team yes. in the country. Megan Good, Odyssey Alexander, they have two both pitchers yeah. that are unicorns, as you like to call them. They both pitchers. are, yeah. <laughs> and they hit well for power and average. 3-1 to Adams, draws the walk. Tying run on board for the Gators with one out. Third time she's been on base. Well, that's something you don't always see from Montana Fouts. You can see that Cornell is out warming up. That's the beauty of having a, uh, a, a staff. You always have someone warm and ready to go, but Montana Fouts did not give up her first walk as a freshman until her 26th inning pitch. Pretty incredible. It's one of the great things about her. She doesn't pitch like a freshman. She doesn't pitch scared and tentatively. She just goes right out, hit her. She trusts her stuff. A lot of confidence for her. And her length makes her unique. You know, she's 6'1". Her reach is all the way to the edge of the circle, the outer edge of the circle. So she's getting a lot closer to home plate with that reach. And she throws hard, 69, 70, 71 miles an hour. Roberts hit and had run the hit on. and run on there. One and two. Look at the stride here. So it's eight feet from the pitching rubber to the end of the circle, and she gets out there. Those long legs. She's so tall. It's it's she's deceptively tall too. You stand next to her, and I for sure at five five, I'm looking right up to her. <laughs> Fly ball, Brown in center. Two down. Does Fouts remind you guys of anybody in particular? How about a, a former All-American and national champion and Olympian? One Jenny Finch. Their, their mechanics are so similar. Look at their push off and then this spot right here, even with their glove hand, with the way that it moves out and their arm circle, finish is a little bit different, but yeah. really similar mechanics. Kind of cool. That's a great comparison that our crew put together. What you got, Holly? Well, I don't think it's by coincidence that she looks a little bit like Jenny Finch out there from a technique standpoint. She was eight years old, and she went to a camp that Jenny Finch was doing. So she has been around her a little bit, seen her growing up, 
And uh, Patrick Murphy says he remembers when she was in high school where she set the Kentucky ERA record for 0.16 ERA. He said, I remember being at a tournament and somebody walking by me and be like, oh, you just got the next Jenny Finch. So that comparison <laughs> has been going since, you know, about eight years old. Amazing Sophia Reynoso right here. Well, and she worked a lot with her dad growing up. Yeah. Didn't really yeah. go to pitching lessons, just worked with their dad, and they watched online videos, and he learned, just perused the internet, and found a way to teach her. Look at how hard it's been to score on her. Only two earned runs or fewer in 22 of her 24 appearances. And she's only given up two home runs. Mm -hmm. So she keeps the ball in the park. She locates her pitches. That's really what it's all about. She's in the zone. And I should say she's on the fringe of the zone. She's not always through it. And if she is through it, she's moving it. And that's really the key. That's how she gets people to swing and miss. On in relief here in the fifth. Well, Michelle, you mentioned the lack of home runs, too, that she gives up. So different than Barnhill, who's given up quite a few. Two total for Fouts, 17 total for Barnhill. Look at the difference per inning. It really is remarkable. And that's the key with locating pitches and not letting them bleed back into the zone. It's hard to hit a ball off the plate or two balls off the plate, well-located pitches out of the park. When well, Kelly gave up, what, 21 home runs last season yep. in her junior year? She's more susceptible to it because of that rise ball. Montana stays a little bit more down. Montana will go up, but Kelly lives up in the zone. Well, the pitchers have been making it tough on the hitters tonight. A combined five hits for the two sides so far. 2-2 two -two pitch with two outs to Sofia Reynoso. Tying run is aboard for Florida. A little flare in foul territory. And Bailey Hemphill's got it. To the bottom of the fifth in our SEC championship game. Who's going to take the hardware home with them to watch the NCAA selection show tomorrow night? Even if there ain't no precedent, switching up the message. I'm about to add a little extra. All the emotion and the drama of a championship Saturday night. Florida and Alabama. Winners of a combined nine SEC tournament titles. And the Giants of the Southeastern Conference are at it again. Not just dominant in the Southeastern Conference, but nationwide. Over the last decade, there are your winningest programs in Division I. Florida atop the list, Alabama third behind Oklahoma. Tremendous success under Tim Walton and Patrick Murphy, including three national championships, two for the Gators, one for the Tide. The last time Murph's Alabama team won this SEC tournament, they went on to win the national championship. And a win again tonight would be a SEC record sixth title, breaking a tie right now with LSU. When you look at this year's Alabama team, it reminds you of the Alabama teams of old when they were winning the SEC championships, when they were at the Women's College World Series every year, when they were hosting a regional and a super regional in Tuscaloosa. It's just that same feel. It's the power, the home runs, it's the speed. The 52 wins, the most in the country. They have the most top 10 wins. And speaking of Coach Murphy, I guess he's just taking this inning off. He's not in the third base coaching box. He's still in the dugout. It's vacant over there. Just wants to. Well, he's probably like, hey, you get on base and I'll go over there. So let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Barnhill will. Uh, oh, there he goes. Now there he's going to make his way out. One down the strikeout of Claire Jenkins. Here comes the top of the order. The third strikeout for Kelly. Knowing him, he's superstitious, so I bet he was standing there for Claire Jenkins in hopes that that might get her going. She's hitless for the tournament. Alyssa Brown, top of the order. Oh, 
1 to Brown. 0 oh, and 2. Fourth strikeout. Two down. Well, we've seen a Florida blind resume. Let's play again. Alabama's in here somewhere. Top 10 wins, top 25 wins, and the worst loss. And comparing them with a couple other teams they might be tussling with for a top eight seed. Hmm. Pretty even along that top line, although the nine does stick out. Well, the 16 is double. Yeah. Going one to KB sides. There's another look at our blind resume. Who do you like best out of that trio? Hands down, the team on the left. That's right, the 16 top 25 wins. Ooh, and that's wow. not comparing them against a seven or eight or nine no. seed. That's comparing them against a higher number. Is Alabama worthy of a two? Well, that right there convinces me. I know. You've convinced me, Beth Mullins. <laughs> I'm just I'm just throwing it out there for the committee. I, yeah. I you know. Yeah. Lot to do tonight in Indianapolis. Apologies to Florida State, by the way. I neglected them a little bit earlier. I think they are right in there too. Yes. Obviously, and with that, that top, resume, top I, I think those three will get the spots behind Oklahoma, mm -hmm. and uh, I'd also say that Washington, co-champs with UCLA yes. in the yes. Pac-12, probably going to round out the top five. Reynoso deep in the hole, fires to first, got her. And is Murphy, that, is, that are we going to use the That took a funny ricochet. Is, is, is Murph wondering, how did that end up out at short? Off of the bat. It took a, a funny bounce. They're going to go ahead and instigate a uh, replay review on a challenge from Patrick Murphy. Each coach has one challenge to use and one only. So we have instant replay review. And he's going to actually want the umpires here to take a look at the play at first base, safe or out. Wow. How close is that? KB Size is literally <laughs> running through the bag, already <laughs> saying safe. that she's, she's safe, safe before she passes it. But that's, a, I, would, I would keep it the same. We had an interesting conversation. Oh, Christy Cornwell does a great job with the umpires. And some, yeah. uh, something that they're going to look at too here is whether or not the foot is off the bag. The umpires are really embracing this. You know, they first and foremost want to get it right. But we also have to decide what is it, when is a catch a catch? Is it when it hits the glove? I think in baseball it's when the ball, you surround the ball with your glove and it's fully in the pocket. And when I talked to Christy uh, Cornwell that yes, yesterday, I guess it was, um, she was saying that we, we have to, those are things we have to write in our book and our yep. code. And they are going to confirm it as out number three to end the inning. So the challenge by Alabama denied. To the sixth we go in a 1-0 Crimson Tide lead. Two of the titans of the game in the Southeastern Conference, Tim Walton and Patrick Murphy. And one of the great rivalries in college softball, the Gators and the Crimson Tide meeting for the fourth time in the SEC final. And the numbers impressive. Murph already over a thousand career wins. Walton has the two natties and a combined 14 regular season SEC titles, including the last 12 in a row. No one else has broken through since Tennessee in 2007. And you know what that says to me? Consistency, day in and day out. It's a culture that they build within their programs. Patrick Murphy, I mean, he wants competitive kids. He knows what he wants. 
Same thing with Tim Walton. Goes back to recruiting. Yeah. We talked earlier about that uh, Crimson Tide team in 2012. How about Walton's back-to-back -back champs in 08 and 09? Stacy Nelson, winners in both of those games. Grand slams for Megan Bush and Mary Ratliff to go back to back to beat Alabama. We talked with Coach earlier about at this point you're you're ready to start discussions about okay who's on your Mount Rushmore who's your all time team, and and Mary Ratliff may not be the biggest name right. uh, may not find her a whole lot in their career records. He pointed out Mary was the first one to really get it going and was the really first big name for them. The pop up there to Jenkins, one down. When they cranked it up, around 2006, 2007, they, they came out here, lost a super to A&M, and after that, it was lights out. They started going to the World Series year after year. How about nine trips in the last 11 years? Five times in the champ series for the Gators? So we've talked about over the last 10 years, really, the SEC and how they have just dominated, really, in the postseason. Flip side, you look at the Pac-12, how it's been a while mm -hmm. since they have been successful in Oklahoma City. Is this the year for them with UCLA and Washington? And boy, a statement from Arizona. They started hitting home runs again, and they beat UCLA two out of three this weekend. It's a really good rebound for them mm. after getting swept by Washington. Yeah, Washington playing really well here at the end of the year. And isn't it Alabama that's been to every single Super since? All 14 of the Super Regionals. You are correct, Amanda Scarborough. Yeah, they started in 2005, freshman year. Mm -hmm. And actually, we played them my first year, or the first year of the Super Regionals in College Station, too. So a little history with both of these teams, but being a different conference then. Here's the 2-2. Two -two. And a strikeout of Caraway, two down. Well, tonight after Top Rank Boxing, join Kenny Mayne and Steve Levy for Sports Center. LeBron apparently has got a new head coach with the Lakers. Also, what will Zion Williamson's impact be on the upcoming NBA draft? Got the lottery coming up soon. Sports Center at midnight Eastern on ESPN and the ESPN app. Going to have a pinch hitter here with two outs. And it will be Cheyenne Lindsay to hit in the eight spot. Slap and fair over the bag at third. Lindsay. Going to try and go to second and dives in safe. And the tying run in scoring position. And a good call by Walton to go to his bench with the pinch hitter. Hit the first pitch that she sees and she just bounces that ball right in front of home plate, creates that hop and it is for sure a fair ball. Good hustle by her to be able to see that ball into the outfield and here, Jolene Henderson, her first base coach, communicating and get to second base. Jolene Henderson, former All-American pitcher at Cal. That, that, that round, she needs to be a little tighter coming around first base. She almost was high five in right field as she <laughs> was on her way to second base. Another pinch hitter here in the nine spot, Jordan Matthews. Had been a starter their first three games. Coming off the bench here and a chance to even it up or take the lead. That was the first hit off of Montana Fouts. And look at Maddie Morgan, the third baseman, talking to this ball. Go foul. Go foul. Foul. Nope. Fair. Good stuff.
Here's the 1 0 to Matthews. Jordan Matthews, uh, Florida wouldn't be here without her. Their big rally in their opener here, the first round. Down three runs. They scored four in the seventh, and Matthews got the walk-off for him to win it. A two-run double. Matthews getting a pitch on the outside corner and just drives it the opposite way. Very familiar to what she did last year in the Super Regionals to help send the Gators to the Women's College World Series. We talked about it at the top, how good Lorenz and Lindemann have been all year long. Lorenz and friends, we call them. So far in this tournament, can the other Gators deliver? And a chance here for Jordan Matthews. With Lorenz on deck, the 2-2 pitch fouled off. Lorenz the single in the third, but then she was the first batter Fouts faced. And with a couple runners on, they induced the ground out to get Lorenz out. This crowd's been pretty into this game, too, today. Yeah, it's a championship. How about setting a Davis Diamond record? 2,233 people tonight in attendance. And it's actually, for the total tournament, the third highest on record at the SEC tournament. Over 11,000 people coming to the tournament. Nice. That's awesome. And inside, full count. That's a good take by Matthews. Three two pitch, ball four. Matthews draws a walk and two on for Amanda Lorenz. Alabama fans wondering where that pitch is, including Coach Murphy. Pitch on the outside corner. And Amanda, we've talked about it throughout this game. The umpire has not called this pitch all day long on the outside corner. He's been a little bit tight. And absolutely, as a pitcher, I want that. That is a huge take for Matthews. I'd have swung it. <laughs> I know. I would have too. Count. Good patience by her to be able to know the strike zone, even in her first to bat of this game. She will come out. Voss will re-enter and run at first base. Well, more importantly, that take and that ball four brings up Amanda Lorenz. Second chance with runner in scoring position for the all-everything senior. How about this for Deja Vu? They were down to South Carolina one to nothing in last year's championship. And Amanda Lorenz stepped in and popped a three-run home run. Two on here with two outs for Lorenz again. Three regular season SEC tournament titles. A, or a regular season title and then a tournament title last year. And the second time now to face Montana Fouts. They have one hit off of her tonight. That was Cheyenne Lindsay, and she's standing out at second base. Outside, 1-0.
Well, that appeared to be wow. the same yeah. spot, but called strike one and one. And he's been consistent with that yeah. pitch and calling it a ball, but surprised he called that one a strike. Um, the judgment that the umpire has to make is that all or part of the ball has to touch the white part of the plate. Baseball plate has black on the corners. Softball is all white. Part of that ball must go over that white. I two and one. 22nd pitch of this inning coming up. They have stranded seven so far tonight. Two more on here and a 3-1 count to Lorenz. That was a good pitch too. She's not scared to go inside to lefties and in fact it in this inning, she's thrown some really good pitches to left-handed hitters, to Caraway, and then also to Matthews in that walk. Three and two. And see, I thought that that one was a good adjustment by Fout. She brought a little bit more on the plate. As a pitcher, you know if you miss an inch off or a little bit on, and that one's closer to the plate than any other one that she's thrown in the last 10 pitches. Oh, it's a good setup. She comes underneath the hands and goes back outside. Two outs. The runners will be on the move with a full count. Foul. Outside the bag at first. That's part of what makes Fout so good, you guys, is that she can work both sides of the plate evenly. So she can look at a scouting report and say, okay, how do we want to attack this pitcher? Doesn't always just have to be to her strength. She has strengths, but she can evenly work both sides of the plate. Makes it really tough for a hitter up there. Reaches for it. Fair ball. Florida's going to tie it up and go for the lead. Here comes Voss to the plate. And Lorenz knocks in two for a 2-1 lead. Amanda Lorenz is simply clutch. Tim Walton calls her the most clutch hitter in the entire game. Picks up RBI. Driving this ball down the line. Immediately she knows it. Look at the energy, the emotion. Pitch on the outside corner. And she just gets the bat out there. Ball tailing to the line. And it's going to make its way all the way into the corner. And Voss scoring for the lead. Two pinch hitters off the bench get on base at the bottom of the order. And then Amanda Lorenz drives them in. RBIs 38 and 39 on the year. And now it's Kendall Lindemann trying to pick up another one. And that wasn't a bad pitch. No. She's just a good hitter. That was off the plate and the exact same pitch that he hasn't been calling for a strike, but she still swings at it and makes something happen. Showing us why she's only the eighth player in SEC history to be a first teamer all SEC four times. And I loved about that at bat that She's walked over 50, 52 times on the year coming into this game. And she knew in that situation her job was to hit. Hit first, then walk, especially in a situation when you're down by a run. That is the leadership knowing she needed to get that done. And they've done this with two outs, too. Yep. Lindsay came up and was a spark plug as a pinch hitter. Get the first pitch. And then Matthews with the quality A.B. Two O to Lindemann. We've been talking about it a lot this year. They didn't win the awards, but what have we said all season? If you had one at bat, yep. you'd probably want Amanda Lorenz to have it. It's true. And if you had one pitch to win a championship, you'd probably want Kelly Barnhill in the circle. That's where Florida is right now. 
They'll have Kelly Barnhill in the circle with a late lead. Question is, how big? And Amanda, as you mentioned, it's the, the double with two outs by Lindsay. But how about Matthews, that walk that set up the ability for Lorenz to come up and do damage? It's all those little things that allow the big things to happen. Lindemann, foul ball. Ripped it down the line and was Tim Walton thinking about whether or not to challenge here? Guess not. Let's see how close it was. Well, the issue with the challenge is you can't because it's a foul ball. Oh, that's right, called foul. Yep. You could challenge if the original call was fair. Yes. Three two now to Kendall Lindemann. And as good as Montana Fouts is, I think as she's winding down her freshman year, the next pitch that she will develop will be the changeup. Her ability to mix speed. She has great control, good velocity. She's got movement down in the zone, up in the zone, but it's that change of pace, the speed, velocity, dimension is what she'll need to work on as she grows. The walk to Lindemann. Two on with two outs. Well, I feel like we saw that change of speeds earlier on. I feel like she was throwing it a little bit more, but you're not throwing it now. Why aren't you throwing it? That's when you need it. Going to get a pinch runner here over at first base. Haven Sampson. Lindemann can re-enter. Hannah Adams will come up, has walked twice, one of them intentionally back in the third inning to load the bases. And Florida worked out of it. Had a two-run home run yesterday in the semifinal win over Auburn. One and one. Florida got some ice cream after their win yesterday in the semi, by the way. They went to Dairy Queen. I saw it on social media. <laughs> it's a good little treat. Yeah. Fouls off the pitch. One and two. Alabama, by the way, in the bottom half of this inning will have the heart of their order. Three, four, and five coming up. Two more innings to work with as the lead is gone and now they're down a run. Adams grounds it to Jenkins over to third for the force out. But Amanda Lorenz, the two run double, gets the Gators the lead. After five innings of not scoring the championship game, Florida puts up a two spot and they take the lead. And softball fans across the country waiting with bated breath to see who's in, who's out, who's hosting, and who you matched up with. A two-run top of the sixth for Florida to grab the lead. So here comes Alabama's response with their three, four, five hitters. Bailey Hempill swings through at one and one. Seems like they've been trying to work her inside. Michelle, the first at bat, that number three, that was a fly out. And then her second at bat, that number seven, that was actually a hit. Only time they pitched her outside. Pitching her all inside, especially with the defensive shift on. Challenging her to hit through it or hit over it. And she did last snap bat. Took that outside pitch and whacked mm -hmm. it right over Reynoso's head. Reynoso, the shortstop in the 5-6 hole, not <laughs> Hannah Adams. The, <laughs> the other one. 
other one up the middle. 1A and 1B. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, from left to right there, third, short, and second, all on the left side. We've talked about it. Of course, the, the advancements in the game, everything's on tape with the SEC network. Every game is on. Everybody's got spray charts. and A shift now in college softball for Bailey Hemphill. Full count. And that's the pitch that there's almost a little bit off of it. It's that upward rise spin and decrease in velocity. It gets up in your eyes as a hitter and you just want to, it baits you. It baits you into swinging through it. Well, in that pitch, Michelle, that you're talking about is why Kelly Barnhill is Kelly Barnhill. Nobody else throws that pitch. You don't ever see it unless you face her. One that's, you know, at your eyes and above your head. You see that as a rise ball all the time. But that low floaty rise is unique to her. Almost blasted the on-deck hitter, Kaylee Tao, <laughs> who got skinny in a hurry. <laughs> Go, uh, you know, uh, Bailey's got some exit velo, too, on this thing. Woo, whoop. And that's why Florida's on the left side of the field. They're infielders. That's why they have three <laughs> over there. That's a prime <laughs> example. She's a pull hitter. They may want to consider a fourth. <laughs> <laughs> had they had a short fielder, they would have been able to make the catch on the, uh, the Hemp Hill base head. <laughs> this is a good battle right here, Barnhill and Bailey. Probably uh, two All-Americans this year. Full count. And Bailey draws the walk on the ninth pitch of the at-bat. Tying run aboard. That is a great at-bat for Bailey Hemphill. That's as good as bashing the ball onto the green. Well, and the last time that Kelly walked the leadoff hitter was when Alabama scored back in the yeah. bottom of the fourth. And now the most important member of the Crimson Tide team is Chloe Anderson, the pinch runner coming on for Hemphill. Bailey can re-enter, but there's your tying run. All the great players that have been a part of this rivalry over the years. 20 trips to the World Series, three national championships. 23 SEC tournament titles. Everybody watching the latest crop of great players to come through. How about Lauren Hager? <laughs> who was a national championship MVP a few years back. Tweeting out Mandy softball. Huge hit for Lorenz. It was all arms, no legs. Reaching away and dropping in a double to score a couple. Holly? Well, Mandy softball comes because that's all she cares about is softball for Amanda Lorenz. You can see that SEC graduate patch on her right shoulder. She graduated in December. She's already completed a semester of graduate school. But she said, Holly, don't get excited about getting rid of me. She said, I will be back next year. She said, I have more to learn about the game. She will be back with this Gator program as a graduate assistant. And she can't wait. She says, I feel like I'm just at the beginning of learning what I can about this game. So Mandy softball, not done yet. You know, Holly, who else hasn't seen the end of Mandy is the U.S. national team. Right. Olympic dreams for Amanda Lorenz. And she's playing her way right back into the pool. Not on the national team this summer. But it's next summer that matters the most when that Olympic team gets together. Yeah, and she's a student of the game, knowing that there's uh, always something out there to learn. And oh, that's that's from the about. Crimson Tide side, Haley yeah. McClinney. <laughs> <laughs> I, I love, love you a lot, lot dude, dude, but come, come on. on. <laughs> <laughs> Haley McClinney is on the U.S. national yeah. team. A lot of friendships, a lot of begrudging respect for each side but not tonight 
Tonight's about a ship. Tonight's about bragging rights for the next 364 days. Tonight's about a little upper hand if we happen to cross paths in the NCAA tournament or at the World Series. Tau to Adams to Reynoso for one. That's all they'll get. One out. Holly? Well, we're seeing those rival tweets going back and forth between the Gators and the Tide. That's because this has been one of the great rivalries in college softball for more than a decade. But it just seems too friendly. I was actually talking to some of the Alabama players before the game, and I said, do you still hate them? And they said, no, not really. I just feel like this is such a new generation of kids coming up for both Alabama and Florida that I just don't think the hate is real anymore, except from the alum who are tweeting back and forth. They still hate each other. <laughs> Well, this is like the SEC version of UCLA and Arizona. Lorenz able to knock it down and did it hit a base runner. Well, did Kaylee Tao contact it? Not, and I think Patrick Murphy is going to say, wait a second, did this go past the defender? So had it already passed Amanda Lorenz and had she had the chance to make a play on it? Which it did, so this will be interesting to see what they're... Yeah. No, they're going to take her off the base paths. So Kaylee Tao out for the second out of the inning. With Schroeder at first. Tough break there for Bama. Skyler Wallace. Well, you don't see that often, and we've no. seen it twice in tonight's yeah. game. One for each team. You see the frustration from Kaylee that she got hit by that one. Hero once already this weekend. Can she do it again? Skylar Wallace. Launched a home run off the top of our SEC now set out beyond the outfield fence to walk off with their quarterfinal win. Two and one. Center fielder Alex Voss has shifted way over to right center. Big hole the other way. Runner goes. The throw down not in time. And a stolen base for Maris Schroeder. So now the tying run in scoring position for Alabama. 19th stolen base for Maris Schroeder. She has that sneaky speed. She will take off. You don't always think about her being one of the best stealers on this Bama team. But, man, she can run. She goes right into the bag and picks a great pitch to run on. Top base stealing team in the Southeastern Conference. And they've given themselves a chance to tie it up here. Two on with two outs. against Kelly Barnhill, who has allowed just one run now in 19 innings of work here at the SEC tournament. And the clutch hits have been hard to come by for the Tide this weekend. Just four for 25 runners in scoring position. And a chance for Matty Morgan. Got the go-ahead on board the bases. Barnhill struck her out back in the fourth. Late in the game now, Alabama doing a good job of really starting to raise the, the pitch count of Kelly Barnhill. 112 pitches now on the evening. Her first two victories in this SEC championship. 
lower, much lower pitch counts, 90 in the 90s and the low 100s on those two victories. Morgan fouls one off, one and two. Two and two, trying to get her to go fishing. Struck her out. Kelly Barnhill ends the threat. And the Gators are three outs away from a championship. Well, it's just her fifth strikeout of the game, but it came at the biggest time. Maddie Morgan battled, but she gets her on the low rise and gets out of a jam. Two on here with two outs for Lorenz again. Reaches for it. Fair ball. Florida's going to tie it up and go for the lead. Here comes Voss to the plate. And Lorenz knocks in two for a 2-1 lead. Play of the day for Amanda Lorenz at the plate and Kelly Barnhill doing it in the circle. The seniors are showing up tonight for the Florida Gators as they try and win a record-tying fifth SEC tournament championship in program history to match Alabama and LSU. Top of the seventh, four, five, and six for the Gators. Then the last chance for Alabama will be their eight, nine, one hitters. They probably have done enough already to host a regional and I think a super regional. This would certainly lock it down for them. And we've talked a lot about the importance. Um, Holly Rowe talked about it earlier, about 76% of teams that host in the tournament win in advance. Roberts waits on the change. Maddie Morgan is there. But in particular for these two programs who are so used to staying at home for regionals and super regionals, their records are so much better when they are at home. Look at this, Alabama at the Rhodes House wins 90% of the time. When they've got to play on the road in the NCAA tournament, they lose 70% of the time. And for Florida, big advantage as well at home when they get to stay in Gainesville. That's why we talk about how important it is to get a top 16 seed, and if you can grab one, one of those top eights. Th those numbers are staggering. I mean, good job to you, Beth, for and company. It's a team effort. For <laughs> it's a, our whole, our whole. But it's why it's your goal group. at the beginning of the year, and why every game matters. You can't afford to have a bad loss because there's going to be another team who just played more consistent than you and is going to take a seat from you. It all starts back in February. It doesn't start just when SEC play starts. And if you play in a Power 5 conference, your scheduling is imperative. It is so important to make sure you're playing the right strength of mm -hmm. schedule. And, and to be honest, I think that's been part of the issue with the Big Ten the last couple years, is that early in the year they need to play a, a harder, firmer schedule to help get their RPIs into a position where they are then hosting. Well, remember, that's why Minnesota didn't get the national seed was because of strength of schedule a couple of years ago. They were ranked number one in the polls and didn't get a seed. That's a fair ball for Reynoso and a dive into the bag double for Sophia. Well, this is a ball that's mashed down the line. It's going to get right past Maddie. And I'm almost wanted, it looked like maybe it touched her glove. 
Reynoso going to sneak that. Gets the fair call. Now, this is also a call that could have been challenged if Alabama had an extra challenge. And I think the umpires may talk about it because I actually thought that may have been a foul ball. You can challenge it if it's called fair, not if it's called foul. And you, you mentioned it, Michelle. Alabama has already used its challenge, so the umpires will... And I love this. Take it upon themselves, official review to take a closer look. You know, we talked about this earlier, and when we met with the umpires, they were emphatic about, we want to get the call right, so we can initiate it as well. And so the question is, does it go off of the glove? It looks fair there. Is it going off the glove? Yeah, it I think it looks like it does. But see, it. right here, you can see that it's foul. I think it crosses the bag, though. And that that will be the, it's the judgment. It's this is think the first look is the one that yeah. gives you the best This look. is something experimental here at the SEC tournament, and the hope is if all goes well, and so far it has, that we can introduce this in NCAA tournament play next year. The SEC taking the lead to see if they can get this done. And it is confirmed fair ball. Well done. Excellent. By Danny Bowman, Tom Meyer, and Ron Alexander. Here are the plays that are reviewable under this system. Certainly all the scoring plays. And each coach gets one challenge. Tim Walton still has one, by the way. And we have a pinch runner coming on. Amanda Bean will go out to run. Reynoso can re-enter. And I think we're also going to have a pinch hitter in Danielle Romanello. And so the confirmation was that it did go off the glove in fair territory. The other thing I like about the replays is they, they've been timely. We haven't been yeah. sitting for yeah, two or three true. minutes. Mm -hmm. They've been... We will not have it in the NCAA tournament, but we will have four umpires at the World Series. Another new addition this year as Florida tries to get some padding on this one-run lead. They've got Alabama down to their final three outs. Coach Walton's had success with his pinch hitter so far in this game. And those four umpires, they'll also be with us. Uh, for the regionals and supers next weekend. Hard to believe the mayhem is upon us. Regionals next weekend. We've got every pitch for you on the ESPN networks. Same for all of the eight super regionals, which are best two out of three. Everything double elimination from hence forth. Yeah, the two pinch hitters in that sixth inning both got on board and scored in front of the Amanda Lorenz two-run double, the big swing. That's the difference so far. You know, I don't, I don't think that Montana Fouts is throwing as hard tonight. I think her velocity is a little bit down. It's affecting her because you're barely yeah. seeing any pitches over 70. Usually she's hitting 71, 72. Right now she's about 68, 69. Right to Hemphill. Two down. Well, if anything, Coach Walton's going to leave here feeling good about his pinch hitters and his gut instinct of when to put him in because this ball was struck so well right at Hemphill, though. Perfect positioning by her. But nice swing by Romanello. Jade Carraway, a single back in the fourth. Jenkins over to first, side retired. Here we go. Bottom seven. They already have one walk-off win in the tournament. Do they have another one in them? They're down a run. Right now, it's especially good to be a Florida Gator with a late one-run lead. 
The top two programs in the Southeastern Conference tussling for a title. Tonight at Texas A&M. Down to their final three outs. Here come the Crimson Tide. A fifth overall for Florida would match the SEC record currently held by Alabama and LSU. Eight, nine. And the top to face Kelly Barnhill, who is three outs away from another SEC title and a 100th career win. And how about Barnhill tonight? Throwing a two hitter. Just gave up those two hits in that fourth inning. And Bama scratched out a run. And they've not made her pay for the walks that she's given up. They've had some people on the base pass, but she's locked it down. Four walks on the evening. What a tournament it has been so far. Just the one run allowed. Just five hits allowed. Now up to 23 strikeouts in her three games here in three days. The Gators are trying to beat a fourth ranked opponent in four days. A bit unexpected coming in as the sixth seed after a frustrating regular season that saw them finish at 500 in the league. Hey, you win it, Reagan. You win it. But they have turned it on here at Davis Diamond. They look like they're playing for something. For the first time all year, something's attainable to them. <laughs> and Kelly Barnhill has been the ace that we have watched for the last four years she and amanda lorenz the seniors trying to go out on top and leave nothing but a vapor trail infield pop up two outs away from a championship and the senior kelly barnhill over 1100 strikeouts in her career why because she can throw a pitch we like to call it a scries it's a screwball and a rise ball kind of combined she has the ability to go low in the zone. Look at the way the ball tumbles down. It moves, it breaks. There's velocity, and those are the five strikeouts. She throws hard to that arm side of the plate. Kelly Barnhill getting it done in her senior season here in the championship game. Claire Jenkins. A fly out and a strikeout. Looking to join Stacy Nelson and Hannah Rogers in the 100 win club at Florida. Already the career strikeout leader for the Gators. O2 pitch. Pop foul. Well, and, and Kelly's thrown the most innings of any year in a Florida uniform this year. Taking on a lot of the load. She's always had an All-American with her pitching on staff. And for her this year, it's just been her shoulder in a lot. One and two. And I think this is a good tournament to prep her for regional, super regionals, because more than likely any time Florida walks out on the field, they're going to be giving the ball to Kelly Barnhill. In the bottom of the roof of the press box. Look at that, a couple of shutout wins. Just the one run given up tonight. And we made the point earlier that she got roughed up in the last SEC series yeah. at home against Missis yeah against Mississippi State. Quite a few home runs given up. It's not your last pitch; it's your next one, right? Absolutely. What's the most important pitch? 
Next pitch coming. Yeah, I think she only pitched about eight innings in a three-game series. Gave up three home runs, nine runs. This pitch is close. That's, Ooh. that's <laughs> probably the best-looking two-strike pitch that I think that we've seen tonight. Well, it's a little hidden. Back to work. I would. Yeah. <laughs> and I love Tim Walton in the dugout. Telling him not to worry. It's okay. You know, he's calming her. He's calming her. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Jenkins has worked the count full here. And Bama has the tying run on board. And the winner coming to the plate. And we talked about how she's hitless for the SEC tournament, but that's actually her sixth walk in three games. And what a moment it would be for Alyssa Brown to get off the schneid. 0 for 10. The leadoff hitter for Alabama in a big moment here. And before he talks to his team, Murph talking with Allie Habits, his assistant. Do you stay with Brown here? They still do have Caroline Hardy on the bench if they needed to. Jenkins is not the base stealing threat that some of the others are. Sides trying to comfort Brown. Hardy had a bat and then put it back. And you just saw Alyssa Brown stepping into the box telling herself, okay. Fourth time seeing Barnhill. And you guys, this is one of those typical Alabama moments where the coaching staff makes a decision. Hardy had the bat in her hand thinking that she was going to be the one to go in and get to pinch hit. And now she's at the front of the dugout yelling her loudest for Alyssa Brown being a great teammate and staying in it. Sipos is about... 30 feet away from her and creeping in at third. Can you drive it down into the dirt and hop it right over her head? We've seen it happen once tonight with Lindsay for Florida. It's possible. One and two. Love the leadership of Loren. She comes over, says, Give me that, give me that ground ball. I'm gonna rub it up, make sure it's dry, give it to my senior teammate. Give her a little message. To short Reynoso for one, over to first, not in time. They do get Jenkins for the second out, and now the tide. Down to their last stand. Great speed at first now for Alabama. KB sides will come up. Had an extra base hit in the semis against Kentucky. She has walked twice today. Brown, the top base stealer in the SEC this year. And Reynoso doing a good job of positioning herself at shortstop. Making sure she's in a position to be able to get to the bag if Brown does decide to run. One and one. Denied a fifth straight regular season SEC championship. Looking for redemption in the tournament. One 
Moore strike for the Gators. Two and two. Reaching for it and just outside the line foul. Two-two pitch. Lorenz right now sitting on the game winner. The two-run double in the top of the sixth inning. Katie sides battling. Hemphill on deck. tournament final two to one over the Crimson Tide Kelly Barnhill goes three and oh in the SEC tournament and Mandy softball comes up huge late in the game and after a frustrating regular season for Florida you can see that this means everything to them coming in something to play for Great start to May. And so impressed, you guys, with the way that Barnhill has matured and grown in the circle to where she's tougher. She doesn't give in as many times, and she's more consistent and calm in the big moments. And you saw that this week. Three wins, only gave up one run. She was unbelievable and ended it with that strikeout of KB Sides, who put up a battle and showed emotion. What a matchup that we had here tonight. But Barnhill... Looked great here in College Station. Pitching through that adversity and Lorenz, how fitting is it that three victories in the tournament for Barnhill and Lorenz with the game winning hit this evening, getting it done. And the victors are standing by with Holly Rowe. There are five seniors on this team, but two of the most crucial tonight, Amanda Lorenz and Kelly Barnhill. And Amanda, first with you, you are standing in the batter's box. You've got runners on, and it's a full count. How did you get this lead? Um, well, first, I just want to give a shout out to Kelly Barnhill. Um, I've never been so proud of her and to call her my teammate. Um, the fight that she's shown all week and, and all season for us is unbelievable. The growth that this young lady has had is just unbelievable. Honestly, it almost brought me to tears during this game. I'm just so proud. And then as for that, I just couldn't let it happen twice where I was going to um, let my team down. So I knew when I had another opportunity, I was just so thankful that um, I could have that opportunity and get it done for my team. You strike the side out. You end this game on a strikeout, Kelly. And there was some emotion from you that I'm not sure I've ever seen from you before. Your reaction to that strikeout, why did it mean so much? 
I think it just meant so much because as a team, you know, no one really expected us to do well in this tournament. Um, and I think just the way that everyone came together every single game uh, this week and everyone contributed. We had um, we had Cheyenne and Lindsay come in and pinch hit, and you know that really that's what got us started. That's what got us back into this game. Um, just every single person contributing, whether it's catching balls, fielding balls, hitting balls, um, and Jordan behind the plate is absolutely amazing. She is my rock, and I couldn't do it without her. So. Amanda, you talk about the growth of Kelly Barnhill, but I think there's something between you. You know, you would go and get the ball and make sure you were the one to deliver it to her. What bond has formed here that is helping you be the nucleus of this team right now? Yeah, I think it, it hasn't always been like that. I think it's been, we've both learned so much about each other, and finally this year we've, we know, we know how to talk to one another, and we know exactly what one, one each other needs. I'm, I need to get hyped up, and Kelly, I was hyped up. I <laughs> chest bumped Kelly in the dugout, and she, I was like, I'm sorry, your hype level, you need to go way down. So I was like, trying to breathe with her to make sure that Kelly was staying at her hype level so I know that about her now when freshman year would been like get hype with me let's go but now I know her and I know that we need to take deep breaths together and that's what gets her in the zone it really is cool I, I can see the change in both of you and it is beautiful to watch Kelly there was some mean in you tonight you were shaking your shoulders and irritated with some of those calls you weren't getting what have you dialed into inside of you that is mean and fierce when you need it I think it's just that it's that extra level when you need it um, you just gotta, sometimes you just kind of like zone into the, it's, it's the zone you kind of think of like, you everyone, everyone talks about getting the zone hitting wise, pitching wise, is you get into that extra level and you find that extra juice, you find that extra oomph, kind of, you know? Um, and I was just, I was like, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do whatever I can to get it done out there. And as you said, like, show the most emotion I probably had in a while on that last one. I was just so excited to just get it done for the team, because I think this team is gonna go doing great things. Every year that you two have been Gators, you have won either the regular season SEC championship or the tournament championship. How have you been so consistent? I think it's just a testament to Coach Wallen and this program and the people that have come before us. Um, we just hold each other each other to a standard at all times, and we just did not we don't expect that to ever drop. So um, definitely not how we wanted this season to go, and um, we definitely love the consistency of winning a regular season SEC championship. But I'm so proud of this team and our fight and finally coming together at the right time. I mean, nothing is more fun than this. The postseason all clicking together. I mean, everyone has contributed all week, and it's just been so much fun to be a part of. It's a brand new season. Go get it, ladies. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Go Gators. Go Gators. Uh, two of the all-time greats at Florida, and they were set up tonight by two pinch hitters to get on base so Amanda Lorenz could have her big moment and Kelly Barnhill shining three nights in a row to go 3-0 and in the tournament, and they have their fifth SEC title to tie Alabama and LSU for the record. Florida wins it two to one over top seeded Alabama. Coming up next at Sports Center, and don't forget tomorrow night, nine Eastern on ESPN two. It's the NCAA softball selection show when we reveal the bracket and the field of 64 for the NCAA tournament. For our entire crew here at Davis Diamond, thanks so much for being with us. We'll see you on the road to the Women's College World Series.